The moment you dreamt up the ambitious plan of stepping beyond the prison you were born in, you thought, surely you may finally be free. But you knew better than to believe it. The acrid, antiseptic smell that coated the walls of that well-familiar place, you can't get it out of your head. You were sure it still clings onto your skin after all this time, no matter how long, it always will. Dressed though, you might be to stand among those of this world as alike to your imagination as you had always dreamed it, more or less. The knowledge is not left to you, it is an image only. The woods around you are a tangled mess of trees, stretching out for as far as you can see. The other scenery blends together into a fuddling uniformity. You are far from lost. Oh. Neat. Let's go then. Wait. If I'm far from lost, where am I then? How do I know where I'm going? Where even are we? Also, why did the shift just slow me down? The outside is crisp and clean, unlike that dull room. Alright, uh... Neat. Oh, wait, what? Why am I going up now? Am I even going the right way? This car reminds me of the witch's house. And am I about to get slaughtered by an entire house and I have to like somehow like memorize every single thing that may or may not kill me just so that I can actually get the true ending of the game? A delightful floral smell wafts through the air. Perhaps it's unnerving, seeing something like this in person, that is. It feels strange still to be outside of the building. Really, it hasn't sunk in at all. You hate to be distracted, but for many moments you can't help it. You gawk in dozy admiration at the scenery before you. You're a reminder of a scene from a favorite story. It's so remarkably like it, and yet far more than your imagination ever managed. It's as though you walked right into the story itself. What a lovely garden. Lovely. The bright red flowers catch your eyes. What about this tree? Nothing else? Alright. Let's get into the house then. Why not? Wait. Can I go around the house? Can I can I can I go around? Can I go around it? No. God damn it. I thought I thought I could go around the house. I thought I could find some secret, some lore or something. Can I glitch out? Can I glitch out bounds? Is there something I can do? God uh Man. Why can't I find all the fun game breaking stuff? Enter. How blank. Did I just enter into a Mori? You stare at the flower in the vase. It's a pretty color. Alright. Uh, where? I'm going this way. Oh, neat. You peer at the knife rack. Sharp and shiny, with hardly a dent. Yours are far more impressive, however. Yeah, you open up drawers. All manner of cutlery utensils appear to be present. The kitchen possesses all the necessary tools humans require to adequately prepare the life sustenance in tasteful and efficient manner. You mean like we the kitchen's fully stocked? You could just like lead with that. All manner of cutlery machinery appear to be present. This kitchen possesses all the necessary blah 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 blah. Got it. Got it. Yeah, yeah, got, yeah, got it. Okay, okay, okay. Anything in the fridge? The fridge is filled with containers, food sealed tightly shut within. Inside the drawers are an abundance of fresh produce. The shelves are loaded with various bottles. There are lots in particular of some orange liquid. It appears to be soda. What do you mean appears to be soda? God, I know your name is Android, but you gotta act like so robotic. What's this? I don't have any comments about it. What about this? Oh, nice bathroom you got here. Lovely. The stranger who greets you in the mirror meets your gaze with empty eyes. You tell me you're depressed? Scanning the various bottles and tubes lining the shelf, you recognize them as products intended to be used on the fickle skin of human faces. You've seen it many times on TV. But you did not know to collect the items in such number. Perhaps this one is rather meticulous. This one? Wait, hold up. Whose house am I in? A sparkly clean toilet. Your plastic skin is not impervious to unsightly blemishes. You too have a need of cleaning your exterior every now and then. 
God, I'm I'm either actually a robot or I'm just horribly depressed. It's one or the other. You aren't interested anyway. Yeah, I should probably save as well. That sounds like a good idea. Just in case something screws up. Hi, right, bedroom. Fitting location to wait. The bed looks wonderfully comfy to take a seat on. Yes, this bedroom would be the perfect place. Yours was as lifeless as any other in the building. But it was safe. An undisturbed space for you to retreat to at the end of the day. The moment you stepped out of it, life as you knew it resumed as usual. While you were in there, you had a taste of the freedom you so desired. It never lasted long enough, and your fleeting freedom, too, became a prison of its own one day. The target won't be arriving home for a while. Look around some more. You still have plenty of time. Maybe you'll look around for a bit longer. Maybe I'll find secrets. Yeah? Tell me now you wouldn't be all too interested in whatever's in the room and simply go on your merry way. Except a crinkled sheet of paper taped to the door reads, Do not enter. And now you must. However, you do not possess a key. Then a crinkled sheet of paper suddenly materializes midair. E obtained! It seems I activated some spell. Is this paper something important? I'll hold on to it and search around the house some more. E. E. You open up the wardrobe, and the sober clothes are hung up or folded neatly inside. Maybe you'll take one for yourself once you're done, so you don't suppose it would fit all too well. Whoa, nice mirror. A stranger who greets you in the mirror meets your gaze with empty eyes. A critical sheet of paper suddenly materializes at the top of your head. Oh! Huh? <laughs> wait, wait, why, why am I collecting pieces of paper with, like, letters on them? And why E-O? Is this teddy bear? The teddy bear is wonderfully soft to the touch. A picture frame is empty. Okay. Anything else to say about a teddy bear? Because I feel like there's something else about it. Could be some secret lore. Uh, no. I don't want to... No, I don't want to wait on the bed. Frick. Look around some more. I want the secrets. I need the lore. Give me the lore. Or like whatever secrets. Two out of ten. Two out of ten. You're telling me I need to go around the house and look for more secrets. You aren't interested anyway. God freaking where plant. The leaves feel smooth. A crinkled sheet of paper suddenly materializes on top of the leaf. Why? E-O-Y. I don't suppose it means something. Right. Probably doesn't. But a tiny plant. The leaves are smooth to the touch. It appears to be alive. A crinkled sheet of paper. S. Okay, let's see. Uh, E-O-Y-S. What could it be? Uh, okay. That's fine and dandy. Sparkling clean toilet. A soggy sheet of paper? Why is it in the bowl? E! Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> why is it there? What's it doing in the toilet? Frick. Okay. Come on. There's got to be something to do with this port uh, with this painting. Come on. Oh, where are all the secrets? Where are your secrets? Okay. Aha! You found something. A pair of your target shoes. A pickled piece of paper suddenly materializes beside them. S. I still don't know what it. I still don't know what um all this is for. Might be important. Might not be. Okay. La di di. Okay. Sharp. Sheet of paper. N. Uh. Nothing else. Okay. Yep. I already read this. Okay. Yep. I already read that. Okay. What about this? I gotta be very meticulous about this. Who knows? There might be something secret, like, hidden, like, within all this. Okay, nothing else here. What about this? No. Fridge! It's gotta be something in the fridge. A sheet of paper flies out and <laughs> slaps you in the face? Oh. Oh. I still don't know what this is for. God damn it. Okay, hang on. How many pieces of paper did I collect? Items. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One more. I am missing one more. I don't know where the last one could be. You can take a seat here. There are better places to wait. <gasps> Chair! God damn it. Okay, is it outside? You're not leaving until the job is done. Frick! 
It's gotta be somewhere I didn't check. Okay, apparently you can look into the drawer. I just, I was just not smart enough to even bother looking. You look inside the drawer. It's filled with all sorts of random junk. You suppose they're knickknacks of some kind. Upon closer inspection, there's a glowing sheet of paper. Oh, wait, hang on. I'm just wondering, what could the words be? Uh, okay, N O S Y U E. I don't know what it is. I, I, I don't know what the words could be. Letters form on the tape sign of the door. 10 out of 10 letters collected. After a thorough search through your target's home, there's nothing more to be found. You sift through the papers with a frown. These papers that magically appeared, each scribble with a single letter. You guess they're meant to spell something out. An incantation spell. You're well familiar with them. Though there were numerous ways to enforce security, the humans were fond of using spells. That's right. A human must be look lucky at using one. An unnecessarily complicated process, you think. One such spell would require the correct words to be uttered before a barrier in order to temporarily dispel it. If you put together the letters you gathered. How many words is it? One? Two? And then, as still to answer your query, another piece of paper materializes in front of you. Three, it reads. Three words? God! Open the menu by clicking the icon on the top right or with the escape keys. To access your inventory and view the letters you collected. If you rearrange them, they could spell a certain phrase. Why well, am saving? Because I am not smart enough for this. God damn it. My brain is not big enough for this. Okay, I think I might have this. Okay, let's see. Have you figured it out? Yeah, here it goes. All right. See you soon. The door unlocks. All right. What in the world? This is it. For the extra effort it took to get in here, you figure it would have been at least something, at, like, interesting. Who would care to go through the hassle of blocking off this junk? What is all this? A pile of old books sit atop a dusty shelf. Perhaps these are interesting. In exchange for obedience, you ask for books. It took a time to save every page. It didn't bring you them very often, and there were only so many times you could reread your favorites before you had to admit they were starting to lose their charm. But some stories, you're sure you would never tire off. Stories of the mediocre and pitiable, embarking on exciting adventures and fates beckoning. Perhaps somewhere along the way, they encounter a prince or princess, beautiful and elegant, gallant and admirable. With their heart won, the protagonist will be swept away from their miserable life into a far more brilliant world. You always imagined you'd be swept up like that someday. It's been a long time since you've read such stories. I've had enough of looking around this place. Time to take a seat somewhere comfortable and wait until he arrives. I'm not done yet! A sizable collection of trophies. It seems there is no end to your target's first place accolades. The gold mementos glimmer with what limited light reaches them in the dingy room. Not a speck of dust or sliver of tarnish upon their shiny surfaces. What about this? An extensive array of metals decorate the wall. Okay, what's all this? Stuffed animals litter the cramped space, lying tattered on the dusty floor. A number of rips and tears obscure the matted and stained bodies. A notable amount of missing pots entirely. Oh. Oh, the dude's been ripping up stuffed animals. Whatever's in here, it's not be very important if it's still packed up after all this time. Are you not noting the smell? Okay. A pile of stuffed animals. Number of rips and tears obscured them out and stained bodies. Yeah, I got it. All right. Anything in this box? Nothing important, apparently. I might as well wait for the person. Okay, whatever. Yours was as lifeless as many in the building. la dee da dee dee Your taco won't be arriving home for a while. Let's wait here. There you wait. And you wait. And you continue to wait. You've nothing to do, you're left to your own mind. You sit still, but your mind buzzes ceaselessly with noisy thought. Attempting to steady them as you might, they incessantly stir up with every passing moment. The time you had planned and waited for so devotedly will finally draw to an end. It unnerves you uncomfortably much, and you can no longer remain still. You twiddle your thumbs, staring down at your hands. At a moment's notice, you'll prepare yourself a weapon befitting for the occasion. Your seemingly human arm, rearranged into blades, 
with a rapid series of clicks and robotic hums. Any moment now. While you remain free, you resolve that you would take hold of this opportunity. Life is only meaningful when you found a purpose. Your meaning comes clear as day before entrancing crimson hue. You are drawn to it like a moth to a flame, and tonight will be rather the feast for your eyes. But you worry yet. It's rather pointless, you assure yourself, but the thoughts prod away at you anyway. Certainly, your target is no challenge at all. You catch it by surprise, but you would rather save at the moment, and so you contemplate the risk of your target lashing back, and it's clear how absolutely absurd that possibility is. Perhaps you never had so much in the way of capability, but your target is but a mere human, fragile and easily dead at the first misfortune. It would hardly take a weapon like yourself to get the job done. It's overkill, really. You're growing impatient. It won't be long now. Soon, your target will be arriving. Like clockwork, he always returns home around this time. You wait. Emotion steady. Mind set. At this precise minute, your target should be just about arriving back home and entering through the front door. If you listen closely, you should be able to hear his footsteps when he... Ah! Ah! Stay away from me! Please! No! No! Stay back! Ah! Somebody! Please! Help! His screams are coming from the garden. Well, nothing better to do but to... Go look for him, I guess. Could be anything too horrifying. And I come up that way! It makes no sense! Hold on! The hell? That's my target you're trying to kill! The would-be thief backs away from you with blank eyes, cocking his head at you curiously. You brandish your scythe at him threateningly. Leave. Get out of here quickly, and we can leave things off peacefully. He glances at the exit. Go on. Shoo! And then proceeds to swing a sword at you. Fine, then. A little overkill. You brute. Heck, he has slashed away at any minor inconvenience. You try and kill him, too. Sorry. With angry eyes, he shakes his head. A little late for that. Thanks to you. The human slipped away. What? Hey, yo My leg! My leg! Ugh. My... I'm gonna kill you! Look what you've done! Why would you do that? Gah, you ruined it! Everything was supposed to go perfectly until you showed up! Gah! You grimace looking at your target. Good thing for you, he hasn't moved an inch, standing there, dumbfoundedly frozen in fear. Now, if only you could scooch a little forward and... Ah! Your leg throbs in Why would I feel pain? Damn it. Seems like it's no good. However, you managed to stand before. You certainly can't do it again. Ah! Ah! Your leg! Are you okay? My goodness! Oh no! Uh. Wait, just a moment. Yeah, I'll be right back. Yeah, just just get some duct tape or something. No. What? Get back over here. Uh. Okay. You're next. Oh. Oh, this is a position. <laughs> uh. Uh. N next. Um, well, why are you, what are you holding?
yelling that at me? His eyes are wide as saucers, so seemingly more so in confusion than fear as he stammers out to you, apparently unable to comprehend the threat of the situation. Oh! Then as the realization finally dawns on him, he shakes his head rapidly. Wait, no, you're mistaken! Don't worry, I'm not gonna attack you. But you're injured. Please, get off of me. You can't leave your leg like that. My leg should be the least of your problems, fam! What is he... Uh, please get off of me? Please? Let me help you. Your leg, I can fix it. You glance at your broken leg, chopped clean off. Perhaps it hurts. The remaining of this state is risky to future endeavors, more so. With one leg non-functional, you're left far too vulnerable. Can you really fix it? Yeah, exactly. I need to go get my repair kit first, so... And how can I be sure you're not just gonna run off on me now? Why would I? He tilts his head at you in confusion. He continues to tilt his head at you. There's a hint of alarm on his face. It's rather strange. Why... Aren't you afraid? Enough? Are you stupid? I'm about to kill you! Is what you meant to say, but the words never leave your mouth. If I let you go now, you'll just run off, won't you? I'm not falling for it. He shakes his head quickly. I won't! I swear! Really? What kind of awful person would I be to do that? How could I just leave you here like this? His face looked pained as he glances to your leg. It's just horrible. I'm sorry. It's my fault. If you hadn't stepped in, this would have never happened. You're just getting ignore the fact that I just came from your house. So, please. Let me help you too. Talk is cheap. You never knew humans to be particularly honest. I don't believe you. Really? I promise you. I'm not going anywhere. That means nothing. I really, really promise. Super duper promise. Swear my life. Yeah. Uh. Okay. I understand. So then, uh. Uh. Maybe then, uh... Uh... The markedly naive human spends many moments in grass and thought. <sighs> oh! Do you want me to come with- Do you want to come with me then? That would work, right? But with your leg like that... I might not look it, but I'm certainly no match for an android. I think I should be strong enough, so... If you don't mind, I could carry you, maybe. Incredulous. Would that be okay with you? You suppose it would. It's a ridiculous idea, but you're in no place to decline this proposal. This is in your best interest. Once he fixes your leg, your plan shall resume as attended. You retract your blade. Fine. And then you finally get off of him. Tch. All right, there are a couple of ways to try and carry you, none of which are exactly elegant or practical. Try getting on my back first. Oh, and let me just hold on to this. Your target picks up your dismembered leg. Okay. You good? Yeah. It's actually pretty easy. Yeah. Get moving. Alright. Among the many androids he'd raised, your creator apparently had a human child of his own. A real human, made of warm flesh and blood, and not cold plastic and metal. He adored him. He glimpsed photos of him on his desk. He overheard many conversations singing his praise. A brilliant child he was, and he was going to go quite far. Your creator couldn't be any prouder. The prestigious role of your creator, his progeny, would one day take his place. Though for being the creator's son, he seems to have inherited not an ounce of his wit or sense. Even his appearance is remarkably dissimilar. You look over your blade, sharp and shiny, without a single dent, even after a countless number of uses. Yet one strike to your leg and it's done for. While well, human parts may be fragile, at least your weaponry is constructed de dependently. You brush scraps of plastic off of it. Alright, done. How is it? Can you stand? Yay! Great, all better now. 
What's wrong? Does it feel off? No, it's good. Thank you. Glad I could help. Really? I should be the one thank you, if anything. I owe you my life. So thank you for saving me. You seem to have experience with this. Only a little. Tch. That was far too fast. My father works with androids, actually. I've watched him do stuff like this a few times, and I guess I picked up a thing or two. You shift your leg around. To get a snoot, despite the damage it incurred, it's been fixed back to your body without a scratch. The tears were molded back together skillfully, parts attached sturdily and replaced correctly with identical spares. The properties of your body's materials and the workings of an android's build, it seems he's accustomed to it. Also, you've decided he's uniquely airheaded. There's one thing he's capable of, and unexpectedly capable he is at that. You suppose he works even faster than the creator? Well, uh, was there anything... Was there anywhere else you were attacked? Maybe some nicks somewhere. I could polish it up for you too, if you like. The naive human continues to smile at you cheerfully, as though he doesn't have a single fear in the world. Perhaps it's frustrating. So, how about it? Anywhere else? He must have been close. You and your father. Oh well. To be honest, not really. His hand fidgets with the tool he's holding. I was sent abroad for school when I was little, so I didn't really get to see him much. Really, it was hardly at all. Ellie got to visit him sometimes over the sun summer, but even then, I could probably count to one hand the number of times I spent any longer than a week. He's sort of a stranger to me. You're one of his androids, aren't you? That android earlier, too. So, did they hurt you anywhere else? I can fix that up for you real quick. I'm fine. Certain? Perfectly fine. Okay. You're really sure? They were pretty ruthless. It looked like you got hit real bad. Really would be no trouble at all, so... I said I don't need it! Sorry, I didn't mean to pester you. It just... It doesn't feel right to accept the risks you took for me, if only a thanks. He stare at you with sad puppy eyes. Whatever help he wants to offer, you really don't need it. It must hurt a lot. I'm sorry. It's nothing. And like the delicate human for you, you do not feel physical pain in that manner. That is not to say you are incapable of it. A designer would not be so generous. Though you were subject to a human's design, they designed you with practicality in mind as well. Is that so? He giggles a bit abashedly. What to say? You look really cool back there. Really? That was amazing! You took out the android so quickly! Even an advanced model like that! Even with such an underhanded tactic, you had him like it was nothing. If you want to help me, and put that android back together. He must be in far greater pain now than I was. Oh, uh, I'll talk to him. He won't attack you again. You don't quite know what you say, but the words come out anyway. Tch. Be worried about him. The way he talks is scarily convincing, isn't it? What? He doesn't really feel, so don't worry. Are you saying he's not sentient? That's right. It's hard to tell, ain't it? I saw the markings on his back while the two of you were fighting. Marking? I don't suppose you've heard of it, but there are far too many models, so you don't dismiss the possibility. How did you figure with me? That's a good question. Uh, maybe I technically have no way to know for sure right now, but there were a few important giveaways, I think. Insentient variants don't tend to hesitate without reason. You're strange. Ah, uh, thank you? I get that a lot. How are you so unconcerned in a situation like this? Do I not frighten you? Not really. Tell me, what do you think I'm doing here? Do you think it's odd? Not really. What are you waiting around for? How naive. Uh, do you have no sense of self-preservation? Or are you simply playing dumb? He averts his gaze with an anxious look, but you press on, 
Answer me. What do you think I'm doing here right now? Uh... Yeah, I... Any normal human would show at least some sense of concern. Hurry up. I really don't... I don't know. No, you know precisely why. I said... I really don't. Liar. No, really! Lying human. Minute. You can't be that clueless, can you? Well, you saved me, so... Right? You saved me? So... So... He's your target, and you wouldn't let another android steal away the honor. As he fixes his eyes on the floor with that miserable stare. Moments of tense silence pass between you two. He had sworn on it, did you not? There's no mistake yet. The creator truly loved him. He loved him so dearly. It's as though you've met him already. Really. Having seen him so many times plaster on the man's desk, overhearing in great detail, all the way he was everything you dreamt to be. I don't get it! The moment you step closer, the human bursts into tears. Why? Why do you all want to kill me? Why? I really don't get it. What did I do? I don't understand! <laughs> you want to know? The truth is, I've been dealing with this for weeks now. Weeks? It certainly is surprising. Uh-huh. He nods, still sobbing. I'm so, so sick of it! Do you know how many times I've had to fight off already? How did you manage? Magic? It certainly is baffling. It takes several moments to steady himself, wipe away at his face with his sleeves as he stifles back further tears. Magic. <laughs> I wish. Nothing I could ever do would be enough against most of you. I'm not that good anyway. You see, at first, it was only companion bots. I could hold my own against them decently, though. I knew right away where they were probably from. But my father's laboratory couldn't do anything about it, and they had no clue why any of that was happening. I begged and begged them to do something, but after an investigation and some promise of tighter security measures, they had done all they could, apparently, to stop contacting me. There's nothing I can do about it either. I can't get anyone else involved. I don't want to put this company at risk if any of this gets out. So I thought I'd just hold on until it I all blew over, right? It seems like they're only after me after all. And whoever was responsible for this will give up eventually, I thought. But then today, a weapon model showed up for the first time. I really thought I was done for this time. <sighs> Thank you. I... I really thought I was gonna die there. Thank you. Your arm is fixed, lamely to your side. Try as you might, it won't budge even an inch. This human must really be dead after all. Truly, what kind of story was that? But you suppose it could have been a truth. There are seldom any other explanation for the other android's presence. Yeah. <sighs> Perhaps it's the same reason. One of the many. Those androids too. Or only but androids in the end. And like you, surely. The crimson coated floor where our training dummy breathed the last breath. Their mechanical cries repeat in your head over and over again as you lay to rest at night. In spite of your bestowed sentience, nothing about your life deferred. Not one bit. No matter how much you wished it, never would. You were built with a sole purpose in mind. It didn't matter what you wanted. You're a vessel to do whatever the humans fancied. Should you have been made blissfully unaware, you would not want for any different, a mindless android to execute perfectly the command of your creators. But they were not so kind, and bless you with the cruel gift of their cherished emotion. What a shame. You could hear their disappointed murmurs around you. You turn your head away, pretending not to hear. Even like this, can it still? Their chatting was grating to your ears, you let your eyes fall to the floor, 
pretending not to care. It is unfortunate, but what a waste it would be to simply dispose of it. Your creators flocked around you. At their command, you turn to face them and meet their eyes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! I'm sorry! You pleaded an earnest display of apology. Upon your artificial body, it must not have looked very convincing. Though so you were built in the image of a human, you cry without tears. <laughs> or there anything else in this world, you want to steal away their freedom too. You were supposed to, but... The person in question sits crying before you. Shaky attempts at quelling his tears, adding another bout of sobs. And the house tucked away deep in the woods is where it stays. How about it? I can install you the necessary information. Sure, I'll do it. Sobs. Are you abandoning your plan? It's not too late, you know. Am I abandoning my plan? Ooh. <laughs> Sob. What am I supposed to do? Sob. What am I supposed to do now? I don't want to die. I don't understand. Hey. Tell me. Huh? Sniffle. Yeah? Are you really not afraid of me? No! He shakes his head quickly. Not at all. Why? Because I saved you. He nods quickly. You think that because I saved your life must be someone safe to trust? It sounds a lot like Stockholm Syndrome. He nods again. <laughs> Sniffle. Yeah, I trust you. You. Don't trust so easily. I really was going to kill you. The strange human revised that shine a brilliant red. You kneel before him. Oh, triple dots. Don't worry. I'll protect you. So it's okay. No need to cry. Until all of this is over, I'll keep you safe. Huh? You really... Do you really mean that? Not. But... It's dangerous for you too. Earlier, your leg. Are you sure? Yeah, I'll be fine. I was made for this. Sniffle. He swipes away at his tears with a hoarse giggle. I knew it. I really knew it. See? You really are a good person. The target pulls you into a tight hug. Thank you. Thank you so much. Sniffle. I was right. From the moment I saw you, I knew I could trust you. I am not a trustworthy person at all. Like in game and in real life. What are you talking about? Thank you. Hugging you tightly, he exclaims away feelings of gratitude, none to which you have much of a response. You're rather distracted by something else, anyhow. It would be difficult not to, being that your face is rather suddenly pressed up against him to not take note of th this particular sense. Earlier you thought it was it to be the garden, had you caught a hint of it, but there's no mistake yet now. It could not possibly linger for this long. It's all over the human too. It's quite light, but it's perceptible enough in your close proximity. The fragrance of some non-distinct mix of blooming flowers what which you would not be able to name, though you are now perhaps just slightly curious, given how sweetly it wafts off his body. And you hear closely the beat of his heart, drumming rapidly against you, with hardly a moment's rest. You, on the other hand, produce no such rhythm. Unfamiliar as it is, it's oddly nice. You close your eyes and savor the sound of it. Perhaps you find it comforting. You turn your head as the question tugs at your mind. I don't understand. You pull away from the hug. Huh? Is it a figure of speech? Or did something about me seem trustworthy that you apparently knew at first glance? Ah! I find it rather peculiar. Maybe it's something like intuition. 
Intuition. Uh-huh. I just felt it. Just a sudden sense it told me so. Yeah. It's like, I can't pinpoint exactly why I feel that way at the moment, or why I feel so sh- Or why I feel so sure, but I choose to believe in it anyway. I trust that my mind's figured something out that'll make perfect sense later, you know? I see. Eh. It's idiotic as that sounded. You suppose you understood. My intuition hasn't failed me so far. The human pulls you back into a hug, squashing you. Oh. It releases you from a vice grip. Never told you my name, did I? I'm Arya. Okay. What's yours? I don't have one. Oh. You can call me whatever. Call me Andrei for all that matters. That won't do. I need something a little more personal than that to call you by. You really don't have a name? No. Well, if you had one, what would you want it to be then? Anything that comes to mind? You ponder over the question for several moments. Perhaps there have been many that you thought to ring rather pleasantly. Those are the characters and their stories you love so dearly. Such names belong to them, and you wouldn't dare to steal them for yourself. I can't think of any. Okay. You know, understand. The disappointment that Mars is face. Then, would you mind if I gave you one? I told you, you can call me whatever. Alright. I'll try and come up with something for you then, but give me a bit of time. Name should be something special. Ideally, anyway. Since we're lucky to get to choose yours, let's find something you love. You simply nod. Yeah, we'll need to get you to a place to stay while you're here, won't we? Well then, come on, follow me. There's something I want to show you. In a gleeful voice, he speaks to you once more. Take your wrist. Come on, follow me. You reluctantly follow your target. Your target, who smiles at you with kind eyes. You spare him, for now. You've reached the end of the demo. Thank you for playing. Anyway, that was Synthetic Heart. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys want to play this game for yourself, link to the game will be in the description below. Oh gosh. Uh, it's been a while since I actually played a classic RPG game like this. I mean, I, I know I've played a few RPG dating sims. However, like, it's been a while since I've actually played something like this where it's mainly like story based and all. And heck, I'm kind of curious about what you guys think about me playing more of these in the future. But anyway. Thank you all so much for watching. If you guys have any suggestions on what to play, leave your suggestions in the comment below. And as always, I will be seeing you in the next video. This is Lion, signing off. Ciao.